You expected a buckle, but you got a bola. Starts with a B. B. Bola. Bruce. Whoa, look how red I am. Red, white, and blue eyes. How about that? <laughs> Toilet paper earring. Whoa, how about that? And, of course, a buckle. And we have World War II Gidget. Welcome, folks. This is our Codependence Day issue. You know? July 4th, but COVID-19, so it looks like COVID's winning right now. But, well. You know, there's still time. Game's not over. I'm not. <laughs> Anyways. <coughs> Ola. Uh, let's get right on it here. Gidge, why don't you sing the song and we'll talk about uh, your lovely uh, like what costume. The, what the yeah. heck am I wearing? Wow, that's there's cool. A, there's, a All right, there's a story, and we're going to do it. There's a story. It's quite a story. Like I say, July 4th, and Pammy, or Gidget, I'm sorry, is, um, what? you know, Pammy, I mean, she, she, you know, she meant nothing to me. It's all Gidget now. Anyways, tell us, about, tell us about this. Tell us about this. Well, this is my dad's World War II, so I know. No, it's not Veterans Day. It's the 4th of July. But, but and his, this wasn't his original hat, but it's like a copy with all his little buttons. And, um. Show the patch. He was a paratrooper in World, in World War, II. War II. Jim jumped out of planes out of in planes Germany. In enemy territory. I mean, that's just insane. Mm -hmm. So, Daddy... Um, but the reason that July 4th, there is actually a connection with July 4th. Yeah. Should I tell? Yeah, you tell. Because this is very I emotional little... for Gidge. This will be a... Uh, this is maybe the most ironic story I know. Um Gidget's dad was a was a World War II veteran, and he was very stoic about it. Never mentioned a thing about it. You know, he had some souvenirs and stuff like that jacket, but they also he stayed away and never he never talked about it. He was one of those typical guys of that time. And then the Tom Brokaw book came out. That must have been about thirty years now, right? The guy, greatest generation. The greatest generation came out, and all of a sudden, the World War II vets came to life. It was a wonderful time it because was. then we finally got to hear the stories mm -hmm. and these people finally took credit for all the sacrifice they made. And um, and Dick, his name was Dick. Uh, and Dick, he, he it was amazing because uh, when I first started going out with Gidge, he was kind of a little bit, you know, standoffish and stoic. But as soon as the, the greatest, an engineer, gen the so, greatest yeah. generation thing happened, he became chatty, 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 yeah. chatty, and really wanted sweet. to talk about everything he did in the war and and all his buddies in the war. And they had a ukulele group, and they had it. They they would go and they do these parades up in Grass Valley, where he retired. To but he did parades San in various State. places, not just Grass Valley. Yeah, right? yeah, they, he, yeah, they yeah, were they, real popular. They, I mean, and, and, huh. and he was an engineer, and he was a real fix it kind of guy, and a real make it kind of guy. And so he took a riding lawnmower and made it into a kind of looking like a mini. Jeep or tank. A Jeep, like, yeah. a, like an army Jeep. He right, made it and, like an and, army Jeep. and so... And then he made... Well, keep going. He made a miniature airplane that it towed, and that was the um, float for these parades. So he had his one of his World War II buddies uh, drive the tractor that looked like a Jeep, and he, he you could... He could sit in this little plane, and he had his outfit on, his real jacket and his pants and his little paratrooper uh, parachute. parachute thingy in the back. And he, they drive down the parade route, and he jump out and go Geronimo, and everybody. 
<laughs> then they did this on Veterans Day parades and, and, and you know. But and really, 4th of July. Day and 4th of July parades, right. And everybody, you know, and then they go a little farther and he'd jump out the other side. Geronimo! And oh, he, they got trophies. They would win first prize for the best thing in the parade. And so then on the 4th of July in 2002 or three in Grass Valley, 4th of July parade, you continue on. Okay, so we've got this parade. They do their they do their thing. They've been doing this a long time. Everything, you know, is normal. They go around to the after the parade to the staging site to put to put the um to put the tractor the tractor on, on, the on a trailer on a to you know to home. take it home. And the and the float that whatever. They're 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 going to do this. They go around and, and he goes a, around and his he's, dri he's driving. He's driving it. It's just anymore. himself now, and he and it's a steep hill, um, to put it away. And he's going down the steep hill, and the brakes give out. And there's a family crossing and, and the street right yeah, in front of there's, him. There's of course there's it's a parade. There's lots of people down there. I'm sure. I mean, and he's all of a sudden, this heavy tractor is barreling towards people, and he ditched it into the curb, you know, just turn it and smash it in the curb and the thing rolled over and he went flying and he hit his head and died. He, he died. Of I mean, not injury. Of, 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 of a head injury, you know, yeah, later that night. And, so it's, and it's, it's what's a, kind of amazing funny, is, sad story. it's like, he it was died. on national news. You may have read about it. <laughs> he uh, died in a paratrooping accident. I mean, he was airborne. He was airborne and died in a paratrooper accident, except for he was damn near 80, right? He was 76. 76? And he was the thinnest, well, obviously in great strongest 76-year-old. I mean, he's jumping out of the plane mountains. like 15 times in a parade, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? He's so still great. But this is so something healthy. like out of out of yeah. John out of a John Irving novel, I think. I mean, it, this could have been a scene in Garp. Yeah, the Lord know? of the Court of the Garp. Sure. So um, can't make this stuff up. And uh, anyway. and I think in the long run he'd be satisfied with oh, the yeah. way it went. Oh, he. You know we miss him, and uh, let's face oh, wow. it, uh, he was a he was a tough son of a bitch. But he would have even liked Ruby, and he always hated dogs. But he would have liked he always liked all our dogs. But he's just barely. He loved Dudley. Yeah. And he and he didn't. You know, he was a farm Facebook boy. See Dudley up there. He, he Those grew up in on a farm YouTube, and, sorry. and dogs were supposed. Dogs had a job and they were supposed to be outside. So this, you know, your indoor rap gap, puppy, fluffy. He he just couldn't go for that. But um, he sure loved. He loved Dudley. Well. Anyway. Anyways. Anyway, my jacket's really hot. I and wanted she to wants share to get it, it off with you and make him a martini. <laughs> and I wanted to get the rest of that stuff and, off, but um, we got an hour to go before that happens. So. <laughs> I'm keeping the hat on. <laughs> oh, yeah, please. You can keep your hat on. Um, yeah, chronic or ironic? We're starting right there, but this Codependence Day thing, I'm sure there'll be a lot of ranting. I know there's going to be a lot of music. I'm just going to start playing. This is a song that I actually been, was made aware of from Gidget and her knowledge of, of the 40s, you know. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So that's a song that Gidget taught me. That you just about, don't hear every day. Called I'm Getting Corns for My Country. Uh, the Andrews Sisters version is the one I learned it from. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's a, it's in a movie because uh, it's got quite a video on YouTube. And um, thank you for turning me on to the maybe 19,000th song I've learned. <laughs> You know. Well, I haven't heard it in well, probably 30 years because I did it in a dance routine oh, on the USS Hornet Ooh. for the 4th of July with the Deco Bell you see, like, in a vintage bathing around. suit. We're thinking about you people. You see how? I mean, you know, it all does come around. It all yeah. does come around. Sorry, and, no bathing suit. Yeah. And I guess for for Codependence Day, we should keep it all going with a red, white, and blue song. Oh. Oh, yeah. We've got one. Now, I was going to do a whole Jimmy Cagney thing, but first of all, <laughs> I'm too tall. That's for sure. Second of all, that whole stick leg thing he does. Oh, yeah. There's just, I would have knocked everything, with with my height, I would have knocked everything in this he room does over. It through. <laughs> I would have kind of, I mean, <gasps> yeah, you know. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh-oh. Sounds like <gasps> trouble. Here uh -oh. comes trouble. Well, we're not going to get there yet because we got something else happening. We got something you happening. might notice those malevolous <laughs> strains coming, yeah. and Ruby sure heard them. Who's that, Ruby? It's the banjo is back. We got another drive-by <laughs> banjo. <laughs> another drive-by <laughs> banjo. Uh, I don't see him. And really? Well, I hear him. I heard him. I don't hear him anymore. Well, you know. <laughs> The banjo, you see, if you, you you can go on YouTube and see uh, Grumps meets the banjo, and of course he was in a lot of the earlier episodes. He's been gone, even though the quarantine, because actually the banjo they have found is sort of a like it's a social distancing machine. You play that thing, and people keep away. So he's been traveling the country to hot spots, making people stay away from each other by inserting his bin. The, the banjology, and um, it's it, it sounds like a banjo joke, but it's worse because it's true. And well, it sounds like he got run off. Did, well, did, he's busy yapping with the neighbors. Oh, he's yapping with the neighbors. Okay, well then we better do something here because we're burning time and we're we're down to like only two people watching, so oh, I guess God. it doesn't really matter. Okay, go. But uh, go. What, 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 what are we going to do here? Yeah, uh, yeah, our song. Okay. Uh, I, I, I need to, you need you to tell me, uh, you know how it goes. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yankee Doodle Do or Die. Yankee Doodle went to 
changes there for a second. I couldn't hear him, man. Movie stars, swimming pools, uh, whatever else there was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Green stamps, CBD, Because uh, Ruby, Ruby, come here. We got Ruby. Ruby actually pre-recorded something. She was uh, a little upset, basically, that I get to play with all the pre-recordings and then I force her to go a cappella. Her agent had a problem with things. Where is she? Did you leave her outside? No, no. She's, she's Ruby. Come on, come on, come on. You, you, you too. Come on. Let's all hang like a family, pretend we're a family, at least for this hour, and then okay. we can go back to normal. Okay. Go back to our dysfunctional selves. Okay. Okay, so this is something, I'm hoping it starts from the beginning. Oh, shoot. Okay, I got a thing, I got to go back to here. Mr. And I gotta, Technical. Oh. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Oh. Oh, man, you know, I mean, why don't they make it easy for old people? This is like, okay, here we go.
Very good, Ruby. I always wanted a daughter that could sing, and I finally got one. We've got some star material oh. here. She just wanted to sing along with it with the thing because she was watching me. And, what a good girl. And oh, I get to do it all the time. Singer. And what so a good little singer. And so oh, she just uh, fell down. Oh, baby. She's a good dog. Oh my goodness. And, uh, oh my goodness gracious. I don't think we're gonna get in, oh, in trouble with the SPC my on this. Baby. Well, here we are, <laughs> and she's done now. She, you know. Yeah. Oh. She likes it. <laughs> Gidget's town. <laughs> I'm telling you. Unfortunately, I'm not sure about where the beginning first. is. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll let the talented one. Oh no, no. Well, oh. we're gonna. We're, I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. I've got some things to say here, and we've oh, already okay. burned half the show. So there this is go. good. Thank you to Banjo, ladies and gentlemen. Like I say, <laughs> social distancing. You got your choice: mask or, or banjo. banjo. <laughs> pick your pick your poison there. I don't know thing is, it's easier to throw a banjo in the washing machine. Think about it. Okay, so um, back to our codependency theme. I actually wrote a song that Gidget refuses to sing. It's a boy-girl thing, and it's, of course, about my codependent past with a few different relationships. So I'm going to have to sing both the boy's part and the girls part and Gidget's never actually heard this song I tried to get her to sing it and when I told her what it was about she immediately said forget it and this is a woman who can learn every song in the world but my songs forget it think you know it's that reminds me back to our another codependent thing in our relationship which is like I got her a cell phone and uh, I'm the only person that has the number and yet she still doesn't answer when it rings Think about that. She doesn't even have to look to see who it is. Of course, now it could be spam risk. But anyways, okay, this is a song I wrote. It's a codependent uh, sort of love ballad, duet. If any of you women out there want to uh, find a partner for it, I'm willing to have it go out in the world and live its life. a silly text now I'm wondering what is next you should have told me not to be that way or say come back another day you believe your shit don't stink I bet that's what you really think I know you always say that I'm the one that's wrong but baby I got this song so don't be calling me with all your misery it's all in your head you made your bed and I ain't gonna forget what you said I ain't aiming nothing at you but it's not me that's always making you blue well you're gone you big baby there's no reason to fear I'm so miserable it's just like you're here Don't leave it to me. 
that's the way that it's gonna be. So don't be calling me with all your misery. You made up your mind. It's all in your head, and you made your bed. And I ain't gonna forget what you said. That's it. I'm not wasting my time, cause to me that would really be a crime. But baby, for sure, I've shed my last tear. I'm so miserable, it's just like you're here. Now the obligatory instrumental part. We gotta figure this out. And she said, So tell me what this is all about. Okay, let's meet just for a beer. I'm so miserable, it's just like you're here, baby. I'm so miserable, it's just like you're. I'm so miserable, it's just like you're. I'm so miserable, it's just like you're here. Well, thank you. Aren't you glad you didn't have to sing that? Oh, gosh, yes. Anyways, anybody wants to have that song for their love duet or try and do it with me in a proper setting. Hey, I'll even change the key for you. Okay. Time for our guess. And you, where I live, we're not allowed to have fireworks. In English, where I live, we're not allowed to have fireworks. That jalapeno just really, really just killed all the COVID-20 in me. Now I'm just hoping it works on the 19. Um, and so, with fireworks in mind, what better instrument to typify that than the drums? Oh, don't start everything when I don't want you to. No. That's the problem. I'm going to talk to, well, Steve Jobs I can't talk to, but somebody I can. Boom, I can do this. I can do this. This. Okay, I can start when I want. Okay, right now, I'm going to have... Today, I think I'm going to have a couple of different drummers, but this first one, a guy I'm so lucky to play with a lot, wish I could play with more, but now we're kind of quarantined. Uh, so many people's favorite drummers, uh, a guy who can play every style of music, it has a sonic palette that is just extreme, he, he kind of embodies like the history of the drums and everything he plays, such a groove. He's got such an amazing idea of how the drums can sound, and you'll notice he's got a very, uh, a very old-looking drum set there, and old equipment. But it doesn't matter; it's all him. I have a band called Junkyard Duo, and and we have a CD out, and this man is on featured on some of the tracks. He's the original Junkyard Duo dude. <clears throat> He's T-Bone Burnett's favorite drummer. You've heard him on lots of records. And um, pretty much everybody's favorite drummer. His name is Jay Bellarose, and we're going to play a tune together. Thank you. 
deep groove. <laughs> song Mercy Mercy, of course, written by Joe Zano. The first version I ever heard of it was Cannibal Adderley's band. You could hear how just so much low end and so much funk and New Orleans and the history of the music is in there. What a genius. Thank you, Jay. Well, Gage, yeah. I think that you're uh, slacking on the show here. Uh, hardly. Are you monitoring? Monitoring our uh, our, our uh, analytics. Uh, sort of. Okay, how are we doing? Oh, we've got uh, let's see, fourteen thousand eight hundred ninety-two watchers. That is really cool. Yeah. What the other the, what the other like uh, six and a half billion people don't like us? They don't count anyway. Oh, okay. Well, I think you should come over here because back to our codependency theme. We need, uh, I think there's a couple of songs in the standard repertoire of the world that that typify what I'm talking about here and sort of show off the beauty of the American codependent uh, gestalt. Ooh, I love oh, the word. gestalt? The oh, gestalt. I don't even know what that word means, but it, it I works. I think it's shaman. Gestalt. It works in every situation. Okay, we got Gidge and Joe Jones. Did everybody see my buckle yet? How about my wrap? Made by Gidge. Look at that. Is that like totally cool? You see, I don't like to wear rings because they bang on the guitar. So this is my my wedding shackle. <laughs> shackle. <laughs> it's sort of like my ball and chain, you dig? Uh, and um, boom, 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 you, boom, boom. Look at these beautiful roses. Where did these come from? Uh, these roses came from the Garden of Gidge. Garden of there's Gage. the Garden of Eve, and then there's the Garden of Gage. That's right. And one of them is actually called the July 4th, right? Not, yes, I have a plant, but um, it, it wasn't. It's not blooming right it now? It wasn't forthcoming at the moment. The blooming thing ain't blooming? It, ain't, it, it did its sparkler display about two weeks ago, and it's a little. It's, so, um, it's sleeping for now, and then it'll come back soon. So we're going to explore we gonna some do? of the pantheon of codependent songs in, in our... Um, American tradition. Why is it so bad? An American, an American. Think about this, huh? American. It's like, like next week, uh, our next show is Brazilian themed, which is also American. Oh sure, South American. Well, actually, it's Brazilian and Argentinian. You know, like just South American theme. I That's American. That. And I was just thinking, you know, Canada's American. We we get away with a lot of America here. You know, oh, what does that say? VFW, life member to the VFW. Oh, okay, okay. I could go into any VFW bar and get free drinks. Whoa. I know, and there's a good one in Carmel. Well, there was. I mean, I'm sure they're not open now. But, um, gosh, I love the Carmel VFW. What a, what a fun hang that place. They do a barbecue, $5. Oh, I know. Oh, I didn't even know about it. I was walking by it in my car one day from having Ruby at the Cypress Inn. I'm walking down the street, and there's this little hubbub in their patio, and there's this guy, he leans over the fence, he goes, hey, why don't you come in and have some barbecue? I'm like, who, me? You know, I'm not a veteran. He goes, oh, it's okay. And you can bring the dog in the bar, and the drinks were like $2 a piece. Oh, my God, I had more fun. I met all these fun people. It was great. 
I, I, of course, you didn't tell me about that. I'm just, this is the first time. I was last you. summer. What, well, you okay. weren't around? Okay, you know. Unlike this summer. Need to know basis here. Okay. Anyways, okay, so this is a tip, typical uh, codependent song, right? What is it? Oh, and I'm going to play too at the same, sing and play at the same time. It's just. Well, you don't have to, you just do what you want. Um, Yeah. 
unless I ran about it on Facebook first. And that's a big man still. Oh, goody. Oxygen, hopefully. Body. Or they have been recently. Kind of body. You know. Yeah. So find yourself somebody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the shoulders on that. Can, can you do that again and have everybody watch just your shoulders? No, because no, no, no. Oh, okay. Watch anyway. for a customer. That's all you get. Okay. Anyway. I'm giving it away. I've decided we're trying to figure out how few views we can get. Well, we're working our way to the bottom here. This is number 29, and next one's going to be number 30, which is like. Oh, Lord have mercy. One less than 31. Okay. So, oh, that's um, very good. There, can you make me another sandwich? Yes. Because because we're yes, not quite Ms. done yet. Yes, but Mr. I got to finish up with something big and good. Yes, because Mr. Grant. For for the one or two people that stayed on, they should have some sort of reward for this. Okay. Codependence Day, July fourth. Grumps is pissed off. <laughs> what else? Grumps is tired. Of all y'all yelling. Now I'm ye and the irony doesn't escape me that I'm yelling about your yelling. But damn, we got problems, all right? We got to, but we also have the potential to change them. And this is a wonderful moment to do it. So how about turning down the bullshit outrage and anger, especially on Facebook and Instagram and all them kind of places when nobody gives a fuck about what you're saying except for getting pissed off about it and hating you and doing something good. Because this is what it's distilled down to. I'm not going to read the entire Declaration of Independence, nor am I going to read the Bill of Rights to you. But there's one thing everybody's wrapping their ass around. Oh, really, mostly their body. I guess not their ass. Is the flag. And I did the Pledge of Allegiance. I was forced to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Not that I minded it. It just was something I had to do every damn day when I was a kid. And there's one line there. With liberty and justice for all. Y'all remember this, right? Now, 
It didn't say liberty and justice for people that had money. It didn't say liberty and justice for people that worship a God or don't worship a God. It didn't say liberty and justice for people who were a particular ethnic group or race. It didn't say anything. It said for all. And for all, where I come from, and I was well enough educated to know for all means every damn body. So here's the deal. It's okay to be pissed off. It's okay. There's lots of shit to be pissed off of. You want to feel good? Make a promise. Liberty and justice for all. I feel better now. You want to really feel good? Live up to that promise. So Grumps is calling on everybody. Everybody. To make a difference. Mentor somebody. Help somebody out. It volunteer your time. Donate your money. Make a vote count. Run for office. Do it. That is what matters. A bunch of Instagram posts is worth about this much compared to any one of those things I mentioned. And you want to feel good? Making a promise feels good, but keeping a promise feels great. I feel good. Try it sometime. <laughs>
And the crowd goes mild. You know, I'm going to push us right to the limit because there's somebody who's sent me some music this week. And I just want to get him on this show. Luckily, he sent me a few things. And so you're going to get the opportunity to hear him so much. He's my brother. He's another just amazing drummer. We are children of Ray, I like to call it. All of us who played with Ray Brown. Oops, I just broke the drums. This is kind of metaphoric for him because he's going to come and break the drums too because when you hear this, you're going to know you heard the drums too. Jay Bellarose and George Flutus in one gig. You people don't know how good you got it. And I know y'all want to come and move in with Grumps and Gidge and we got plenty of room for you down the street. Dig what I mean? There's a house for sale. Anyways, George Flutus, Children of Ray. Well, he's just an amazing drummer. We luckily finally connected and played some before the pandemic, mandemic. God damn it, turned everything down. And uh, hold on, George. Don't get, don't do, no, so turn it. We're going to have to start this again. It's like iPads. Why do you start videos as soon as you touch them? No. Okay, we're going to do this. This is George Flutus. He lives in Chicago. Uh, unbelievable drummer and uh, inspiration. And, and like I say, another child of Ray. And he sent me some music to play with. We're going to jam and then we're going to get Gidge back to play our theme. Courses of that. That's how good it was. Oops. George. 
big news. Got two more of these coming up sometime soon. Gage, come, let's finish this, this off because I know we got some codependent shrimp burgers or something cooking in the oven. And, uh, Marco Phillips died. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry, I'm trying to fuck that up now, but I just read it. Well, goodbye, Margo. Two days ago. Well, she was, you know. Yeah, I know, but still. But still, I know. The drums died, too. Look what happened. <gasps> you know, they were really heading south, so it's, we need a new box. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think we just need to tighten it down a little bit. Okay, let's let's make this happen. <coughs> Folks, want to tell you, Codependence Ooh. Day. Make the best of it. July 4th, but COVID-19. So we're losing this war. Let's win this son of a bitch. Pull it out in the final quarter and move forward. And for those of you that are watching, sorry. And for those of you that aren't, we're moving forward. Sorry. Okay. video goodbye end my video and now you folks on youtube have to deal with this look at the buckle oh my god <laughs>